Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody. Um, we're going to just make three videos. It, it's been, it's Sunday. I've had church and um, I preached at uh, church this afternoon. So I want to give you the sermon uh, in here uh, that I preached at my home church. So it's good to be with you. I hope everybody's okay. And love to everybody out there. Don't forget my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com. Don't forget Facebook. You can get me there. You can get Bible teaching and testimonies. And then don't forget Twitter is Apologetics. Defending the Faith. And you'll see lots of material there. Defending the Christian Faith. So without further ado, we've got two or three videos. We've got a sermon. And then uh, I want to talk about this paper on um, annihilationism. I think it's annihilationism, yeah. So we'll get to that. Um, yeah, we'll get to that um, in a second. So let's just uh, get ready. So it's good to be with you. I hope you've had a good day today. And um, so I've got my notes. If you're preaching, it's good to have some notes. And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about a few things. So if you turn to Joshua, um, Joshua chapter 1. So let's pray. Father, we come before you today. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your love and your grace. And Father, we give you the prayers and we give you the glory and we give you the honour. And Father, I just pray as I preach this sermon, I pray that it be a blessing to people. And I pray that you sow it to people's hearts, that people will be blessed and encouraged as they hear your word today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all his people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your course. Thou shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto the people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all um, the law which Moses thy servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For them shall make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou made, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whither thou goest. Sorry I read, read that fast. Um, Christopher Columbus um, when he was looking for the Americas, it, it took weeks and weeks before he found America, the Americas. But as he was looking for the, for, for the land, he couldn't find it. And his soldiers and, and sailors were getting really angry with him. And they, they were telling him to turn back. There's no such thing as any other land. We need to go back. This is crazy. And they were going to mutiny and they were going to kill Columbus. But he, he went into his cabin and he, and he said... He wrote down in his diary, sail on. 
And sometimes we feel like we need we want to give up. We feel like there's no point in going forward. But we need to say on. And this passage in Joshua chapter 1, God is saying, say on. You've got to go forward, not backward. You've got to go forward, not stand still. And uh, I want to look at verse 6. Uh, Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance in the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give them. We need to be strong and have courage. Number one, don't let your trauma stop you from going forward. Johnny Erickson, uh, so don't let your trauma stop you from moving forward. Johnny Erickson was a, a lady, a young lady, and uh, 18, 19. She jumped in the water. She was a brilliant swimmer, brilliant athlete. She jumped in the water of a swimming pool, banged her head on the floor, and dislocated her spine. And she was incapacitated for the rest of her life. She felt like giving up. But she got on with her life and she served the Lord. And even today she's a paraplegic. She can only paint not with her hands. She has to use a, 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 a brush with her mouth. And, but yet she's gone forward. She's, she's not allowed the trauma to stop her from going forward in her life. Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 to 2 now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. There was a trauma involved here. Joshua had one of the greatest leaders of the time, Moses, die. It was a big loss. And the people of God lost a great leader and they were bereaved. And yet God said, move forward. Have you had a bereavement? Maybe something, a trauma, a tragedy where you've not been able to move on. Maybe you've lost someone. Maybe someone's died and you've, you just can't get over it. And, and you just don't seem to be going forward. You don't even seem, you just seem to be just existing the fight, the life of you is gone. Maybe you've lost a dream. Maybe dreams, you had big dreams, but you've lost those dreams. You've lost them for a, because of a trauma. Something happened to you and you've never got over it. It's always come back. Maybe it's negative thoughts. Something has come in your life and it stopped you from going forward. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. It's not God's will that you stand still. He wants you to go forward and he's given you a spirit of love. He's not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You keep telling yourself, and believing a lie, you keep saying this thing, this trauma, you allow it to bring dark thoughts in your mind and you, you allow these lies to spread in your mind that, and, and you need to say, no, I'm not listening to those lies anymore. God has a future for me. The past is the past and the future is the future. Grasp the future and stop letting the past pull you back. The past is gone. It's under the blood. Number two, don't let your fears stop you moving forward. Have you ever tried, first time you ever learned to drive a car, you were fearful on the first day. You're fearful that you might crush the car. I'll tell you a little story. When I, I, I used to pay the AA for my car training, and for the first three lessons, I didn't even get a chance to drive the car. He was driving the car. So I don't know what that was all about. But your first lesson is fearful. Maybe when you remember you were a little kid. Was it fearful when you went to school the first time? Joshua had fears. The fears of great enemies confronting him. 
seven kingdoms, seven mighty powerful kingdoms, and he didn't have the resources to deal with them. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 to 5. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I have unto Moses, from the wilderness, this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall your, be your coast. There shall, not be, shall, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua, you're, you're worried about these great big enemies, but go forward because I've given you the land and I'm taking out your enemies. And God says to you today, go forward. I'm going to take down your problems and I'm going to take down your enemies. Go forward. In Isaiah 41, 10, it says, Fear not. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Ye, I will help thee. Ye, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Isaiah 41, 10. God is with you. God is with you. you whatever thoughts that pull you down, fears that are pulling you down, God is with you right now. And all the resources of God. Just I put a thought in my notes here. Some of you keep asking God for his will. God, give me your will. God, guide me. God, show me if I should be doing this or that. But God is saying to you, no, I gave you the call. I showed you what you needed to do. But you keep saying, God, show me, show me, show me. And God has said, I have shown you, I called you. So why do you keep asking God to show you when he called you and showed you? The reason is, is because you're full of fear. And because you're full of fear and because you're full of whatever issues are stopping you from going forward, you, you, you can't go forward because you're allowing these fears to dominate. And so instead of stepping up to the plate and stepping up and taking responsibility and going forward with your call, you're allowing these fears to stop you and you keep looking at these fears and looking at these problems and and then you keep going to God, God show me, how do I do it? What, what, what do I do? How do I go forward? And God is saying, stop asking me. Go forward. I called you, go forward. But you're full of fear, you're wracked with fear. And God is saying, stop it now. Don't allow these fears anymore. I called you. Now obey the call in your life. It might be a call, you, you've been called to be a husband or a wife. It might be your call to be a youth worker, you're called to be a pastor, you're called to be an evangelist, you're called to go to university, you're called to go to college, you're called to work in that particular workplace that you're in. You might be called to retirement. Whatever the call is, God has given you a call and you know what the call is, but you keep saying, God, please guide me. And God is wanting to say to you, I have called you, get on with it. But you keep saying, no, I can't because of this problem, that problem. I'm not able to do it. I've failed. I've made mistakes. I can't do it. They keep telling me I can't do it. And so you keep saying, God, show me, show me. But really, deep down, you're full of fear. And God doesn't want that in your life. There was a pastor and he had a son. And the son was a pastor. And the, the, the son pastor... The young man, as a pastor, was was uh, finding it difficult in the ministry, and he came to his dad, and his dad was a pastor, and he expected his dad to say, "Come here, son. I know you're finding it hard. Let me show you love, love, love." And oh dear, it's going to be hard. No, what he did to his son, he said, "Son, pull your braces up and get on with it. Welcome to ministry." Welcome to ministry. Welcome to ministry, folks. 
It's not easy, it's tough. Welcome to ministry. Pull your braces up and get on with it. Pull your skirt up, pull your pants up and get on with the call that God has got for you. But it's hard, it's difficult. I get here, I get criticized. I don't get the help I need. I don't get the resources I need. Welcome to ministry. Get on with it. God called you. Stop asking him, Lord, what should I do? Get on with it. He gave you a call. Third, have courage and move forward. Have courage and move forward. So let's just recap. Don't let your trauma stop you moving forward. Number two. Don't let your fear stop you moving forward. Now number three. Have courage and move forward. When I was a little kid, my favourite film is the, was The Wizard of Oz. Every year, without fail, I would watch The Wizard of Oz. I loved it. And the one character that I found interesting was Scarecrow. I liked the way he, he, he kind of like wiggled his arms and everything. But the thing about Scarecrow is he didn't have courage. And he wanted courage. And we're like Scarecrow. We're, we... We, we hit problems, we hit difficulties, and we just want to run away. We haven't got the courage, and we, 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 we feel like little kids. We just want to hide. I can't cope with the marriage. I can't cope with the job. I can't cope with the ministry. Let me hide. Let me hide. And we need courage. There was a minister who was on the Titanic, and the Titanic went down, and the minister grabbed some wood, and he was okay for a minute, and a young man, he grabbed some wood, and... He was, he was okay for a minute and the sea brought the two pieces of driftwood together and the minister said to the young man, Are you saved? And, and the wood separated and, and then the wood, the two driftwoods came again and the minister said to the young man again, Are you saved? And a few minutes later the minister died. And then the, the young man was saved in the, by the rescuers with, the, with boats and was taken back to America and then he went to Canada and in a church he said this. He said, I was that minister's last convert. You see, that minister in that water ministered and preached the gospel to that young man and that young man got saved. Why, why, why was he able to do it? Because he had courage. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. Be strong and of good courage, for unto the people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto the fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. Be strong and of good courage. Why was the minister able to minister to that young man? Number one, he realized God was a great God. It didn't matter if he died, God was with him. Number two, he thought of that man, that young man. Number three, he realized he was called to a task to preach the gospel. How do you gain courage? You realize how great your God is. You realize that you need to think of other people and you realize your call and obey the call that God has put upon your life. And as you exercise faith in that call, God will bless you. You turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And you could go on and on and on. Verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith, my friends. You've got to have faith. 
Faith that God is with you in your call. Faith that God can take down your enemies. Faith that God is bigger than your enemies. Faith that God is bigger than your insecurities. Faith that God goes with you, it will strengthen you, will defend you, will protect you. You have faith in Him. Faith in Him. God. Obey your call and exercise faith in it. Believe that God will work. Stop looking at the giants. Joshua, if he looked at the giants and thought how big the giants were, he would have stayed in the wilderness and perished like everybody else, but he didn't. He looked to the God who was over the giants. You've got to stop looking at the problems and start looking at the God over the problems and going forward in the call that God has for you, whatever that call is. You might be a pastor and you say, I can't hack it anymore. I don't get encouragement from these people. They don't care about me. I get criticism and people have left the church. Uh, I can't hack ministry anymore. I'm leaving the ministry. I'm fed up with the ministry. You've got to look at the thing from a faith perspective. God is with you. God, first of all, called you. And God is over all these issues. So get on with it. Go forward. Say in your marriage, your marriage is, is drying up. It's not working the way... You, you thought, you thought it would be, and it's not going forward, and you think, I, I, I need to get out of this. This isn't working. This is no good. But God called you to the marriage. So God is with you in the marriage. So God, you've got to believe that God is bigger than the problems in your marriage, and you've got to go forward. In every area of your life, wherever you're hitting the problems in it, seems impossible, seems no point, and you just want to go back and give up, then you've got to go forward and believe that God will be with you in the call. I think he called Hudson Taylor, didn't he? To China. And look what God did to, with him in China. He called um, William Carey, the Baptist minister, he called him to India and God used him. Now, God might just, be call, might just be calling you to be a wife or a husband. That is just as important as being a missionary. God might be calling you to be a grandma or a granddad. He might be calling you to just do, do some volunteer work for your local community. He might be calling you to be a business in business. You know what the call of God is in your life, but you've got to start having courage. And that courage comes by believing how great God is, by thinking of other people, and by exercising your call, then you will grow in courage. But you have to exercise faith in all of this and believe that God is with you and God has called you and God goes before you. If you don't have that faith, you will sink. At every problem you face, you will sink and you will retreat. So you must maintain and encourage and strengthen and embolden and lift up your faith in God's promises and in Him. Number four, move forward, taking God's word seriously. Move forward, taking God's word seriously. There's a minister in, a, in the deep south of America, had five children. And the five children that he had, he read these words over them. The first day that the baby was born, he read these words. This book of the Lord shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. To them that shall make the way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Oh, I'm going to labour this now. I'm going to labour it and labour it until you're sick and tired of hearing this now. Listen to me now. Please listen to me. Please listen. What was the criteria for success of going into battle? It was to meditate on the word of God day and night. Yeah? That was the criteria for success. 
to meditate on the Word of God day and night. Hmm? Just get some water. Just think about that. Read those verses. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 8 and 9. Just read them again. Because I don't want you to miss this. I'm going to get some water. There's a cancer in the church, folks. This cancer has been in the church a long, long time. And unless the, the church roots this cancer out, she's not going to go anywhere and you're not going to go anywhere. You need to root this cancer out. What is the cancer? The cancer is that the church is, does not take the word of God and honor the word of God seriously. That's the cancer. I'll give you an example. Husband and wife, they're married. The marriage is not doing well. It's, it's going on the rocks. It, it, it's not a happy marriage. So the wife meets a young man, talks to him at work, thinks, I like this man. I'd like to be with this man. Next thing you know, they're with each other, and she's left her husband. She goes to the church. She tells the pastor, God has told me to leave my husband and marry this guy. Now, what's wrong with that? It doesn't say it in the Bible. God hasn't told her to do that. You see, she's made that up. And many, many people are making it up as they go along. Many pastors are making it up as they go along. Bringing things in that are not in the Bible. Bringing ideas that are not in the Bible. Bringing practices that are not in the Bible. Being control. You know, one of the things that I've noticed with leaders is the control freaks. Pastors are often control freaks wanting to control people. Where is that in the Bible? It doesn't say anywhere that you're to be a control freak. It doesn't tell you anywhere that you are to be a control freak. We're putting things in place instead of following the Bible. So, we get emotional. We, 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 we follow our emotions rather than the Bible. We think we're super spiritual, doing great spiritual acts, but we don't follow the Bible. We have ministers that follow culture and Christians that follow culture and say, well, whatever the culture says, whatever political correctness says, so we will follow. then there is a famine in the land. There is a famine of the Word of God. I'm not interested in your ideas. God's not interested in your ideas. He's interested in, will you follow the Word of God? And as ministers and leaders, and as people of God, you must start to put the Word of God into practice. You must start to honour the Word of God. We are in a crisis in the church because the leaders of the church are not listening to the word of God. You are actually stopping the work of God. Do you know why? Do you know why you're stopping the word of God? Because you're not listening to the word of God. You're not following the word of God. And now you're in the way of God's movement. God wants to move in his power. Here, this is God, he wants to move, and you're blocking the power, you're blocking the work of God. Why? Because you are a control freak. Because it's all about you. Because you are full of your self ideas, your culture, you, what culture says, or your philosophy, your sociology, your psychology, and you're blocking the work of God, and, or, or your ideas, or your visions, or your dreams, or whatever it is, and you put it all at the heart of your church and it's become a blockage to the real movement of God because when God moves, He moves through this. And you don't want to teach this. You don't want to lead the people in this. You don't want to obey this. You'd rather spend five hours talking about dreams 
than study the Word of God. You'd rather talk about psychology and sociology than read the Word of God. You'd rather talk about philosophy and read the, than read the Word of God. You'd rather explain uncomfortable things in the Bible, explain them away rather than actually believe them. Why? Because you've exalted yourself above the Word of God. I'm laboring this far, far too much, I know. But I have to labor it. I have to labor it. Turn, please, with me to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Let's look at Psalm 1. Right? Are you ready? Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel. Are you ready? Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the postmodernist, and standeth in the way of the postmodernist, and sitteth in the way of the postmodernist, and delights in postmodernism. He shall be like a plant tree. Uh, Tree planted by the rivers of water. No, it doesn't say that, does it? Does it say this? Blessed is the man that is a control freak, who standeth in the way of control freaks, and sitteth in the seat of control freaks, and delights in being a control freak. No. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the way seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that spring forth with fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. But Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate, what, day and night. There's a meditation in the word of God day and night. I want to honour the Word of God, I want to follow the Word of God, I want to feed on the Word of God, I want to preach the Word of God, I want to teach the Word of God, I want to obey the Word of God. But we're moved away from this, my friends. Time and time again, time and time again, it's like you teach and teach and teach and warn and warn and warn and, and, and then you can preach a sermon and you can warn and within a minute it's disregarded. You can preach the word and say, follow the word of God, obey the word of God, and then you can turn around and the people go to another meeting where you've got some guy who says he's died and gone to, 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 to heaven and he's written a book and uh, we all need to follow this book and this is the real book of real meaning and real hope and this is the book that we all need to read and everybody goes off and follows this guy and follows this new book and then they realise a few years later that the guy has swindled everybody out of millions and, and, and has gone off with his secretary. Because everybody's looking to be titillated. Everybody's looking to be entertained. Everybody's looking to build their own kingdom, to do it their own way. And very few people are building their lives on the word of God. And so we, we get train wrecks. We, we make our lives a train wreck as we move away from the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, I've laboured this and, I, and I'm labouring it because this is the, the issue of our times, folks. I don't care what any other issue you say. The issue of our times is this issue. The cancer in the church today is ultimately, at its source, rebellion against the Word of God. That is the ultimate cancer that is got within the church today. Whether you deny hell and believe in annihilationism, whether you believe in gay marriage, whatever it is, the ultimate thing that is behind it all is rebellion against the word of God. There's a cancer that has taken root in the people of God 
and its unbelief concerning the word of God. Period. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I wish every minister who will not preach the word of God, go! Leave! Go! We don't want you! I don't care if you've got a PhD. Go! We don't need you. We don't want you. You shouldn't be in the ministry if you're not going to preach the Word of God. If you're not going to preach the Bible, then go. Leave the ministry. Leave and go. Doesn't matter if you're a bishop. And, 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 and everybody thinks you're smart. And you give smart seminars. And you know the latest philosophy. And the latest intellectual arguments. At the highest academic level. Go. If you're not preaching this word of God. Please leave. Go. We don't want you. We don't need you. And God doesn't want you. If you're not going to preach the word of God. Leave. You're doing more harm than good. You're wolves in sheep's clothing. You're blocking the move of God. You're blocking the power of God. You're blocking the blessings of God. And you as the people of God should not tolerate second rate preachers who are giving their opinions rather than preaching the word of God. Who want to entertain you rather than preach the word of God. Who will go on and on and on about they've died and gone to heaven for hour upon hour but they will not teach you the word of God. You should not tolerate these people but you should say go. I really believe that a lot of preachers and ministers are getting in the way of God. They're getting in the way of blessing. Because you've, you've departed from this word. You've departed from the simplicity of this word. And the words that I'm saying are strong. I know what I am saying is very, very strong. But it's because you're doing so much bad damage. You are damaging the work of God. You are destroying lives. With your pumped up, pompous, control freakish, postmodern nonsense. You might get angry with me. You might get be furious with me. But God cannot stand your postmodern nonsense that you brought in this church. And you're spewing out your postmodern rubbish. And you're sugarcoating it with Bible language, and everybody thinks it's wonderful, but you know, and you've hoodwinked the people. You're not preaching the Word of God, you're preaching postmodern philosophy, you're preaching modernist ideas, and you've sugarcoated it by using orthodox and biblical language so that the people of God are finding it difficult to discern what you're saying. And this goes right through the Pentecostal and Evangelical, right through every denomination. Just because you've read a few books at seminary does not mean you can say what you want. Just because you're in ministry and you have a reputation does not mean you can say what you want. You can't. Right? God did not give you the authority to say what you want. He gave you the authority to teach this book. And this book you must stand on, and this book you must teach. And if you will not teach this book, you must leave the ministry, and leave it fast. And anybody going into the ministry must remember that it's to this book you must stand on, it is this book you must teach, and it is this book you will pass on to your generation, the teaching from this book. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 9. This also that in the last days perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasting, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof as shuts turn away. So the culture in 
in the world and in the church is a culture that does not want the word of God. What is God's remedy? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. But he says, I charge thee, Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Isn't that beautiful? Be instant, in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long-suffering and doctrine. The church will never be blessed until she takes the word of God seriously, until she honours her ministers and office bearers, those who want to teach and who are called to teach the word of God until the church honours the office bearers who will preach the word. And until the office bearers preach and teach the word, there'll be no blessing within the church. Time and time, I preach time and time. I, 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 I am from a reformed background, but for some reason I've been asked to preach in a lot of Pentecostal churches recently. And time and time again, I say, preach the word, preach the word. And the Pentecostal churches, no, 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 we're, we're heal, 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 and gifts, gifts, gifts. And they will not hear this important word, preach the word. And then they wonder why they don't get the blessing that they want. The blessing that they're after, they don't get the blessing because they're not running after the word of God. They're running after sensationalism. I can pack a church full. I can get 500 people in a church if I put a healing meeting on and do some amazing things and say, oh, look at the healing meeting. Everybody will come. But if I just get a preacher, an old-fashioned preacher who just preaches the word, I get five people. Why is that? Because people are not seeking the word of God. They're not seeking what God has for them in the word. They're seeking sensationalism. They're seeking extraordinary things rather than seeking the God of extraordinary things. Rather than seeking the God of miracles, they're seeking miracles. And you find the God of miracles in the word of God. I'm not saying God can't do miracles. God is a supernatural God. God does great things. God can do amazing things, heal people. He can do things, great things. He's not a dead God, he's a live God. But seriously, the reason why all of us get into trouble, the reason why all of us make mistakes, the reason why we don't go forward in our lives as much as we should do is because we're not studying the Bible and, and following the Bible. And it saddens me and it grieves me. It truly, truly grieves me. It grieves me because so many pastors, so many preachers are not teaching this book. And as Christians, you must have a hunger for the word and desire to follow the book and read the book and study the book and learn about the book and apply the book in your life. And if you do that, God, will, you, you will be able to go forward and meet every challenge that you face because you're rooted and grounded in the word of God. God was going to do miracles in Joshua's life. God brought... Jericho down, that was a miracle. God had it all planned, he was going to do miracles. And he could have said to them, look, I meditate on the future miracles that I'm going to do. No. The miracles were going to come, great things were going to happen. But they weren't to rely upon them, they were to rely upon the word of God. And we have to get... We have to ask God to help us to study the Bible 
and apply the Bible in our lives and follow the Bible. And, and if you're a pastor today, please, 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 we, we don't want your opinions. We don't want your ideas. We don't want stories about yourself and how, how great a hero you are and what a wonderful hero you are and the great things that you have done. We, we don't want to hear that you've got a Harley Davidson and that you've got a aeroplane and that you're on a million dollars. We don't want to hear your PhD. We don't want to hear your latest philosophical book that you've read or how, how, how you are being used in the, the local denomination. What we want to hear is the sound of the word of God ringing clear, strong and true in the pulpit. That's what we want to hear. That's what God commands. That's what God people's needs. And that is the only way for the church and for us to go forward in our lives, to meditate on the word of God day and night. I labored that a lot, but I had to labor it because the people of God are not listening. They're not hearing. <laughs> They're like, they just want to run, a, run here and there and they just, they just go after anything. And it's not good. We've got to be focused on this book. We, is it not so clear to the law and to the testimony and if they will not refer to this, there is no light in them, says Isaiah. Oh dear. The Lord has patience. Final conclusion. I'm going to cut it short. For too long in your life, it's been like a winter. There's been a winter, a cloud in your life. And you've wondered in your life, will it ever leave? Will this winter ever leave? And what God is saying to you today is saying, look, I love you. I don't want you to punish yourself anymore. I don't want you to be living in these dark thoughts anymore. I want you to move forward because I've got a plan for you. I've got a future for you. You know the call I gave you. Stop hesitating. Stop varicating. Stop standing still or even going back. I called you to, to this call. You know what I called you. Now, go forward in it because I really want to be with you. I want to bless you. And, and, and you're not in a winter season anymore, you're in a summer season. Because I'm going to bless you, I'm going to open doors for you, I'm going to bless you. Because I'm your God, and I love you, and I, I, I want to take you over the Jordan. And I want to show you the things that I have for you. That's God's message for you today. Let's turn to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And some translations, for I know the plans that I have for you. God has a plan and it's a good plan for your life and he wants you to go forward in that plan. It's not going to be easy at times, it's going to be difficult, but he wants you to go forward. Go forward even though you've had a trauma in your life. Don't let that trauma keep pulling you back. It's time to go forward, it's time to live. Don't let the fears keep coming in and strangling your, your, your ministry and your life. It's time to let those fears go. Move forward with courage. Have a great belief in God. Have faith in Him that He can move mountains in your life. And move forward 
making this advance, putting roots, deep roots in the Word of God, deep roots of meditation and thinking about the Word and meditating on the Word. And get deep roots so that as you go forward, when the battles come, you'll, you'll be strong. And know that you're out of the winter season now. You're in a summer season where God really wants to bless you. And that God's really with you. Alright, so be of good courage. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today. Lord, I said some strong words at times. And perhaps some ministers and leaders will be upset. But Lord, I just pray that they would take it with humility. And realise that sometimes we need to be challenged. We need to get back to the old paths of the word of God and, and preach the simple gospel and, and lift up Jesus and, and just honour you, Lord. And, and maybe they need to just get back to this, Lord. And I pray that you speak to them, Lord. But Father, for all of us, Lord, forgive us our weakness and our failure. Forgive us for letting the dark thoughts pull us back and allowing things to just get us down, Lord. Forgive us our weakness and our frailty, Lord. And I just pray for your people today. I pray that you minister to them and meet their needs and just fill them with your joy and your peace and your love and just surround them, Lord, with your goodness and your blessings. And be with each person, Lord, who heard your word through this message. And bless them, Lord, in your name and for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hope that was a blessing to you. I was a bit strong with the ministers who will not preach the word of God faithfully, but there we are. And I laboured it quite a lot, and I, forgive me for that, but I just think we're in such bad times. And I just feel it, it, it really needs to be hammered on. So, we're going to just do two short videos for a few minutes now, after this on annihilationism and evolution and then we'll leave it at that and, and maybe one other topic as well just two two or three two or, two or three videos for three minutes and then that's me for the day i preached in a church today i visited my mother today and then i visited my father my father's not well and um, my mom's not been well and so i visited my family and which was uh, other side of uh, Chatterton Way, and then I drove all the way over to to uh, Eccles Way to, to visit my father who's not well, so it's been a busy day today, but uh, I just wanted to minister the word of God today, and I just pray that uh, this message would be a blessing to you and an and encouragement to you in, in your life, um, yeah, so God bless you. I'm going to do a few other short videos now and I hope they'll be a blessing to you. God bless you.